It's 77 days to the general elections. Hello, good morning, and welcome to News Desk here on your journey channel on Multi TV. This bulletin is available on your Multi TV Digibox, also available on your Go TV channel 144 and your DS TV channel 421. Coming up, internal GES memo cited instructs regional directors to refrain from issuing appointment letters to newly recruited teachers. What does this mean, and what do these recruits make of this move? Flag bearer of the opposition New Patriotic Party resumes campaign of the Greater Accra region as he heads to Adenta and its environs today. We'll bring you a live feed from the campaign grounds. And still on the campaign trail, and flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party, Dr. Papakwesi Indom attempts courting some more votes in Medina, well, also in the Greater Accra region, after a similar move to Wu stalwarts of the NPP and the CPP. We have details of these stories and a lot more, including updates in business and sports, all coming up in this one hour bulletin. Stay with us. My name is Kwabna Chenche Henibwati. Many thanks for joining us here on News Desk. So very first story this, uh, this morning. And a Kenyan law professor and the director and chief executive officer of the Kenyan Law School is proposing a shift from the formal education that produces degrees and other certificates to a system of education that will be able to change the minds and hearts of the African electorate and the politician. Now, according to Professor Patrick Locke Otieno Lumumba, the departure from the current educational system would help address the attitudinal issues that have left the continent on its knees. One of the things that we must do is to change our political culture. And political culture requires, among other things, that we must know that in the modern democratic dispensation, leadership is about governance and about servant leadership. Africa must recognize that if Africa is to survive. The African electorate must also be educated. But one of the things that worries me, it appears that formal education, this education where we get degrees does not appear to help. We need another kind of education. We need a kind of education that changes our minds and hearts a kind of education that revolutionizes our minds and hearts. It is only that other kind of education that is going to change us. And that kind of education is the kind of education that I think Kwame Nukuruma was talking about. If you listen to Kwame Nukuruma quite clearly, if you listen to him quite clearly, you Ghanaians and fellow Africans, and I have carefully read Kwame Nukuruma and his numerous speeches, it is amazing that as early as 1960s, he had the wisdom to see that science and technology was at the very heart of human development. And he founded the Kwame Nukuruma University of Science and Technology. Today, I'm told that half of the graduates, they are graduating humanities. You lost the script. So that the university is in danger of becoming a university of science and technology simply because it is its name. Well, Professor Lumumba also asked African leaders to provide stringent measures in the fight against corruption. Some of you may be aspiring to positions of leadership in the political arena, but the question is, why do you want to lead? In Africa, the shortest route to ill-gotten wealth is political leadership. If you want to get wealth without working for it at all, join African politics. That is the truth everywhere in Africa, except for very few places. The only place that stands out now in that regard is Tanzania with President John Pombe Magufuli. The rest in Africa, I do not know. Excuse me, I'm a visitor. 
They hunt and gather buildings and cars and money. And that is why African leadership does not attract our best men and women. And African electorate also responds to money. I do not know whether it happens here in Africa, in Ghana. The African electorate also expects to be bribed so that they can vote. And until the day we are able to exercise the ghost of ethnicity, among other things, and the ghost of corruption in Africa, Africa will never get good leaders. To some political issues now, and flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party, Dr. Papa Kwesindum, has reiterated his commitment to form an all-inclusive government if elected president in the December 2016 general elections, targeting three personalities, some with deep political affiliations. Dr. Indum threw an invitation to former NPP presidential aspirant and respected cardiologist, Professor Kobna Frimpon Boating. He also wooed CPP Vice Chairman Susan Edouard-Mankwa and successful entrepreneur, Dr. Kofi Amwa. Progressive People's Party, we are inclusive in nature. It doesn't matter whether you are from the north or the south, you are Christian, you are Muslim, you, you went and supported NDC, MPP, CPP, BNC. When we come to power and we want somebody to do something, if you are the right person, we'll give the job to you. So that Ghana can benefit. So that Ghana can benefit. So there are some people. There are some people in Ghana. together with us. I want to ask Susan Edouard Mampua CPP, she should come and join us. She should come and join us. She should come and join us. Dr. Kofi Amua, he is an independent. He should come and join us. Ghanaian, a patriotic Ghanaian, Dr. Primbong Watson, he should come and work with us. He should come and work with us. We want everybody to come and work with us. Whether you are NBC, NDP, CPP, BNC, all of you come together, work with the Progressive People's Party so that this country, this country can benefit. And that's a uh, flag bearer of the Progressive People's Party, Dr. Papa Kwesi Indum. Uh, you heard him try to woo quite a number of people there. Uh, this morning, we are told he's continuing with that very move and he's headed towards uh, Medina in the Greater Accra region. Well, we'll be bringing you a lot more on that as soon as. Uh, we get a lot more information as to what he's doing currently. But as we get ready for that, let's turn our attention to some other issues. And this time around, education. And a directive from the Ghana Education Service is instructing all regional directors to refrain from issuing appointment letters to newly trained teachers posted to their various domains until financial clearance is granted by the Finance Ministry. Now, the directive comes on the back of reports indicating the recruitment of teaching staff by some MMD directors and heads of some senior high schools. The Governor National Democratic Congress in its 2016 manifesto highlights uh, promised to ensure prompt payment of salaries and allowances of newly posted or promoted teachers via electronic processing and payment systems. Let's try and uh, get an understanding of really uh, what this directive means because with this very directive it suggests that well yes indeed you have been posted but without your appointment letter that gives a clear breakdown of uh, what it is you'll be doing and how much you'll be earning of course you cannot be paid uh, pro for the teacher trainees association of ghana uh, patrick akari and she joins me on phone now with some thoughts on this um century good morning many thanks for joining us here on news desk good morning sir. okay so yes oh, um uh, the, the document captures the fact that a lot more of your members 
uh, who are done with the training, obviously, are going to be uh, employed into the educational system. But this very memo that we have cited suggests that, yes, indeed, you are going to be employed, but the issue of payments may linger on for a while. Uh, have you come across this very information? Have you heard of it? Have you seen the document? And what is your reaction to it? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, before I make an attempt to this, I want to speak it clear on air. I'm the former PRO of okay. TAG. Former PRO of TAG. Right. But this issue has come to our deck as far as teacher trainees advocacy is concerned. And it has become a very sad news to the side of the newly trained teachers. This system is failing the newly trained teachers as a matter of agency. I can speak now. Yesterday, I was at a particular place addressing the number of newly trained who are frustrated in the system in as much as how they have organized the way they are to put or the way they are to be put in. One, the system they brought that they should go to online and their region will be given to them is failing a lot of people. Two, those who have even been able to assess it will indicate that you have to go to the region. And the region, too, when you go there, it is another case. Now, currently, to some of the district offices, the information coming is that whatever is going on, looks, it looks like uh, something to quench the appetite of the newly trained. Who wants to be in the classroom? Just to quench it down. Because for, for now, your school districts are not in. Those who are even having their district, we don't know where the information is coming from, though. Their schools are not there. Per analysis, this is where we are finding the problem. It wasn't like that. Previously, it wasn't done by the Ministry of Education. But now, it is being done by the Ministry of Education. And it is creating problem and inconsistency as far as the newly trained ones are concerned. Let me try and understand what the system used to be up until now. You're saying that uh, initially it was not the Ministry of the Ghana Education Service that handled this. Uh, how was the process like prior to this very, this very move? Thank you very much. As far as our analysis is concerned and also how far we've gone to, previously the, the, those people who are to be posted, that is a newly trained one, their names are already at the University of Cape Coast Institute they carry out. Then the Ghana Education Service will go to the institute for the name and bring it to the region. And the region will also bring it to the district. And the HR of the district will allocate schools for the people who are new to be posted. That was how the system is. But here is the case, all of a sudden, this time around, the training or the newly trained teachers have to go to the, the online of which they will go there and inconsistency will also come in over there. I see. So as things stand now, I don't know, but what are your members going to do, particularly for those of you who are done with the training and are ready to be absorbed into the system? What's going to happen now? now? That, that, that is the problem, of which um, teacher trainees and advocacy are yet to come out with a release to explain and also submit the, the, the plight of these people who are frustrated in the system. Uh, we are just seeing in a way that if we don't take care critically, if we don't take care, they will be seen as they've been posted. Meanwhile, they don't have a place to go. For that matter, uh, the, 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 the front leaders, some of the front leaders of the trainees are speaking to them and investigation is also underway to speak to some educational stakeholders to come quickly on board so that this problem will be solved. As a matter of agency, we shouldn't forget, school has also resumed, of which the services of these newly ones are needed in the various schools. So if for a man they are not posted, you can see the challenges Ghana Education Service is going to have in its system. Okay. And here is a case that we want quality education, and it's going to create a lot of problems. So now, uh, a team being teacher trainee, advocacy, uh, being in touch with some of the people and other educational stakeholders, have been called upon, and we want to address this issue for them to quickly advise government, or as a matter of agency, the Ministry of Education to uh, reorganize itself again and make sure as soon as possible 
uh, the newly trained teachers are going to be posted into the various schools of which they wish they have to go. Patrick Akarienchi, many thanks for your time on News Desk this morning. And Patrick Akarienchi is former public relations officer of the Teacher Trainees Association of Ghana, uh, getting us his thoughts on that very issue. And uh, I just want to read a bit of that very quote uh, in the manifesto. But even before I do that, well, I'm told that we have a, a, a clip of the Labor and Employment Minister, Hauna Idrisu, who has been speaking to this very issue of uh, why that very directive was given to the MMD directors, suggesting that, yes, go ahead and employ them, but do not give them the appointment letters. And inadvertently, it means they are not going to be paid. But let's hear an explanation from Mr. Haruna Idrisu, Minister, Labor Relations Minister. Right. The weight that you put on this uh, letter, there is a control aspect of this communication, which was advice at the policy level. Mm -hmm. I chaired one of the meetings to which the Deputy Director General of Education, NGS officials, participated in that meeting. Yeah. And we have issued a new government policy to validate data of all newly recruit, recruited teachers. Mm -hmm. So that is why you will see a paragraph in this letter. I'm sure we have will help you with the MEFP, which is the memorandum of uh, what was agreed between mm -hmm. the government and the fund. So within education, there are limited vacancies and limited recruitment in respect of teachers, nurses, and doctors. That's why we have a large pool of graduate nurses on our NEF, because they expect that automatically they would have been absorbed into uh, uh, the system. But I think that we have to do it much more cleaner. And I should think that the trust of this letter, uh, the CCT. C CCT and others, Okay. Even as we speak today, they are uh, unhappy with government because because of our inability to resolve some of the matters pertaining to this. Okay. There's a backlog of these teachers who remain unpaid, who have not been processed onto the payroll. But to make it more cleaner, I request that, in fact, I have conveyed it to high authority. I may even re-engineer the HR division of the Ministry of Education and GES, mm. just as we did to help. There were some shifting because you didn't understand some of the things which went on. And uh, uh, let me also announce 
that inherent in this, which is part of the cure, is a lot of fraud. That can you imagine a driver being uh, uh, elevated to a director in part of the data we have received, mm -hmm. part of the certificates that we have, uh, yeah, part of the certificates we have received. Uh, you see someone in a particular area, maybe in the humanities, but in his certificate you find masters in agriculture. We've detected a lot of fraud. I encourage you to speak to uh, Graham Smith, uh, the fair with Labor and Employment Minister Haruna Idris was speaking earlier on the Super Morning Show this morning. Well, uh, he mentioned quite a number of things, but key amongst them has to do with an issue pertaining to the Ghana Education Service. Well, Public Relations Officer for the Ghana Education Service, uh, Reverend Jonathan Bete, joins me on phone now with some clarity on those things that were mentioned by the minister a short while ago. Mr. Bete, Reverend, good morning. Many thanks for joining us. Morning. Okay, so uh, we'd want to first find out why this directive in the first place, and then maybe we could move on from there. So, per this directive we have in this uh, communique, or should I say memo, it suggests that, yes, you can get the MMDs to go ahead and recruit these teachers, but hold on, do not pay them. Do not even give them appointment letters. Why such a directive? Well, this directive came as a result of the tension uh, that was mounting from the teacher to knees end. We have received a lot of complaints, a lot of issues from uh, the social media, information that did not come from Ghana Education Service, uh, most of which uh, have confused the public. Some also came from other directions. Uh, we have received authority order from the Ministry of Education to recruit and to employ people who are teachers, especially our trainees. So the process is ongoing to make sure that everybody is posted. But we are doing this on online. Because it is an online uh, process, a lot of social media information also came in to conflict whatever directions or the directives that we have given. So we ask directors and authorities, management of the education service in the various schools to hold on until they receive a directive, another directive from our end. Now, we thought it wise that if anybody at all is posted to begin a work anywhere, the person is expected to be paid. Now, appointment letters go with salary, and we are expecting to receive go ahead white paper from the Minister of Finance giving us the go-ahead to do the, the posting. So that was the recent information we gathered that compelled Ghana Education Service to let these regional directors and district directors, municipal and uh, metropolitan directors, to hold on. Now, when they receive, our people receive the appointment letters, we are feeling that the tension and the fever around them will come down. They'll be cool. So, 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 by all means, Reverend, yes. just hold on. So you're saying this move is just to calm Tempest and not necessarily to fix the problem. You're just calming we their are Tempest. Fixing, we are fixing the problem and keeping their necks that uh, they wouldn't think that Ghana Education Service has abandoned them or refused their posting. If you know you are going to teach at so and so school, you know that at least you have a, a, a hope that when the financial clearance is given out, you will go to the classroom. Okay, so you are, you are just aimed at giving, you are, your target is to give them hope. Thank you for the summary. I am saying that we are giving them hope that their posting is ongoing. These are people who need jobs. They need money. And you are saying you are giving them hope when really yes, what they need is listen money? listen to me. Listen to me. I am if listening to give, you. Yes, what I'm saying is that if we give them the uh, information that you are posted to uh, Homauli a primary school or a Takradi so and so primary school or GSS or certain school to teach, you are assured that your training college is not, it's never in vain. But you but still do not know are, when it is that you are going to receive monies. Yes, that is what I'm saying that. If the people start working, it means that you have to start the payment from the time that you issue out the appointment letter. Now that we've not been assured that tomorrow the financial clearance will be out, we want them not to be in the classroom to start working to compare Ghana Education Service 
to begin or to effect their uh, salary. We want to avoid piling of arrears and any other thing that we, we've gone through uh, this season. That is why we said that. Get the information that you are posted, but don't go into the classroom and teach. When the financial clearance is given to the number of teachers we have recruited and the trainees, we will ask them to begin the teaching. We know very well that school, will re school has resumed. Uh, BEC students will be going to school. So we are making provision that it will not be long when financial clearance is given out, that order will be given to them to begin okay. their assignment. Re Reverend, I'm just trying to look at something here. And you're saying that you've given them... Uh, let's take a look at the quota, the number of people you are giving this message of hope to. How many? Um, they are about 16,000. 15,000. And already we were told that there was a backlog that uh, you, were, you were yet to clear. Have you been able to do that now? We are in the process of making sure that all those things are done. Already we've not cleared the backlog and uh, we you are giving... Say, you can't say that. You ask whether, whether we have... And you said you are in the and process of doing that. That process. suggests that and there's still a ongoing. backlog that is yet it, to be it cleared. It means yeah. that it is ongoing. It is ongoing. So it's That's yet to be cleared, be like I said. Yes. Okay. Is that? Okay. So, Let me hear you well, yes. Yes, yes, exactly. I, I was just saying that the summary is that it is yet to be cleared, but you're still, you're still in the process of uh, clearing, clearing that very backlog. We are clearing them, my brother. We are clearing everything that we have, the backlog we have. We are clearing them. Do we know when there will be a clearance for these 15,000 persons to finally get the appointment letters and begin to work and earn some money? We've been assured that it will not be long as we, uh, the posting of the BEC candidates are also ongoing or going to uh, begin very soon, we are expecting that financial clearance will also come along so that uh, the administration is, uh, uh, or be is beginning or begin from that end. For those who fall within the category of the backlog issue, uh, I, I think a similar promise was made by your outfit some time back. And as of now, they are still not paid. So if, if we are to give these people the same message, is that not to suggest that it may take a while longer than anticipated? We want to avoid it. That's why we are saying that no authority, no headmaster, no district director or regional director is expected to give appointment later to avoid all that we have. It. Okay. Now, the payment of arrears and other things that you were talking about as back law, we have few to clear to finish up. Okay. By this month, September, most of them will be collecting their money. And October, we are hoping to end all the backlog that we have. So by October, the ministry is going to clear the entire backlog? We are hoping seriously so. Okay. All right. Reverend, many thanks for your time. But, but then again, just, just to get this on record, you are saying that you still do not know when exactly they are going to be given the go-ahead to begin to work. Where the go-ahead means the financial clearance very yes. soon. I am saying that very soon. Very soon. We can't put a timeline to it, say, by close of I year. I wouldn't like to put a timeline. You will take me on okay. very soon. So maybe by January? Master, very soon can be tomorrow or next week. All right. Reverend Jonathan Bete is a public relations officer for the Ghana Education Service and he's been speaking to us on this very issue that has got us talking. And indeed, quite a number of people are pretty worried about it. Well, uh, he has given a position on this. Let's now hear from a deputy minister in charge of education. Let's hear what he also has to say as far as uh, measures to absorb the numbers of uh, teachers in the country are concerned. Uh, here is Samo Okujito Blackwa begin by saying that I saw that on social media only last night. Right. I've been trying to reach uh, Mrs. Busum Chisam if she indeed altered that. Okay. Because uh, that directive or that notice to regional directors is at, v is at variance to what is going on now. Okay. Um, as I speak to you, we issued a statement last week, uh, last two weeks actually, spelling out the posting processes for this year. Mm. We have improved the system, made it electronic. Uh, so this time you don't have, as a graduate of the College of Education, you don't have to travel all the way to the regional director's office where your College of Education was to find out where you've been posted. And then you have to travel again to the region where you've been posted, go to the district director before you report to uh, your posting location. It's been very cumbersome, the risk involved, travel expenses and all of that. So we've decided this year to um, 
automate the entire system and make it electronic. So we put out a statement that spelled out these new reforms. Mm. And then we also indicated we 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 also we also indicated that we will put out the regional postings first, which we have done, and then we said they should check on the twenty first, which is tomorrow, for the district and school postings so they know the districts they have been sent to in the specific locations. So this notice, I'm here to check its authenticity. I have not received uh, a copy. Uh, what I do know and what we've been working with is that the Ministry of Education is exempted from any such embargo. Ministry of Health, I also know, is, 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 is exempted. You know, there's a net freeze ongoing. So for other sectors, you only replace uh, staff that retire, that uh, resign, or that, um, that, that, that are deceased. However, education and health are exempted, right. and we have been employing. We just finished employing 2,500 mathematics and science teachers. Mm. They've received their appointment letters. Um, the graduates of the colleges of education, Last week, we discussed the financial clearance with the finance minister. We have um, the approval to go ahead and employ all 16,432. However, the finance minister raised issue about the wholesale numbers that auditors had raised concerns that there, were, there was some infiltration. So you, you, you give an institution financial clearance, say, for 10,000, and some people who are not entitled to that get into the system. So mm. for you know, uh, auditing purposes, making sure that... Deputy Education Minister in charge of uh, tertiary, Samuel Okujeto Blackwa, also speaking on the Super Morning Show earlier today. Well, it appears uh, the information is a bit murky. We'll try and uh, streamline all the information coming through and then we'll bring to you the very latest as far as that very issue is concerned. But you're still watching News Desk here on your Joy News Channel on Multi TV. It's also available on your Go TV Channel 144 and your DSTV Channel 4. Two, one. We return shortly to bring you some business with the man on the body of was standing by. Stay on.